Entrance hymn is number 735. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And you're all very, very welcome on this second Sunday of Easter, Divine Mercy Sunday, as we continue celebrating the season of Easter. Special welcome. If you're a visitor with us this weekend, if you've not been with us for a little while, a special welcome to those who join us by means of the live stream. Can I just check that we're here, that we're able to hear us at the back? Yeah, I'm getting a few nods, so thank you. We had problems at the earlier mass, so hopefully those are fixed now. So brothers and sisters, let's acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. 
Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, and the Virgin, all the angels and the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindled the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed, through our Lord ever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The whole group of believers was united, heart and soul. No one claimed for his own use anything that he had, as everything they owned was held in common. The Apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus with great power, and they were all given great respect. None of their members was ever in want, as all those who owned land or houses would sell them and bring the money from them to present it to the apostles. It was then distributed to any members who might be in need. The word of the Lord. letter of St. John. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ has been begotten by God, and whoever loves the Father that begot him loves the child whom he begets. 
We can be sure that we love God's children if we love God himself and do what he has commanded us. This is what loving God is, keeping his commandments. And his commandments are not difficult because anyone who has been begotten by God has already overcome the world. This is the victory over the world, our faith. Who can overcome the world? Only the man who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus Christ, who came by water and blood, not with water only, but with water and blood, with the Spirit as another witness, since the Spirit is the truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From the Holy Gospel according to John. In the evening of that same day, the first day of the week, the doors were closed in the room where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them. He said to them, Peace be with you, and showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. And he said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so am I sending you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. For those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. For those whose sins you retain, they are retained. Thomas called the twin, Jesus came. When the disciples said, We have seen the Lord, he answered, Unless I see the holes that the nails made in his hands, and can put my finger into the holes they made, and unless I can put my hand into his side, I refuse to believe. Eight days later, the disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. The doors were closed, but Jesus came in and stood among them. Peace. Be with you, he said. Then he spoke to Thomas. Put your finger here. Look, here are my hands. Give me your hand. Put it into my side. Doubt no longer, but believe. Thomas replied, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, You believe because you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. There were many other signs that Jesus worked and the disciples saw, but they are not recorded in this book. These are recorded so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing this, you may have life through his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. On this Divine Mercy Sunday, the question to ask ourselves is, what is Divine Mercy? 
In John's Gospel, there's no distinction between God's love and God's mercy. Divine mercy is just divine love in action. How love is expressed. Some years ago, the Jesuit priest, Gerard Hughes, came to Lincoln Cathedral to talk to us about God's mercy. And as this is Divine Mercy Day, I'm going to try and give you a gist of just how he put it to us. He began by quoting Shakespeare. Portia's plea for mercy to Shylock, who was demanding, demanding his pound of flesh. And she tries to explain to Shylock what mercy is. The quality of mercy is not strained. It drops as the gentle rain from heaven upon the place below. It is twice blessed. It blesses those who give and those who receive. It is an attribute of God himself. All earthly power should be as God's power when mercy seasons justice. Therefore, Shylock, though justice be your claim, consider this, that if we relied only on justice, none of us should see salvation. We pray to God for mercy, but that same prayer is meant for us, for it teaches us to be godlike, which is merciful. For Portia, God's mercy is simply the way that God shows his love. And Christ commands us to love and to show that love, to be the Good Samaritan through acts of charity, which is the same as saying acts of mercy. That's what mercy is, love in action. And according to Gerard Hughes, we too easily view mercy in the wrong light. We think of mercy only in terms of a just punishment and begging to be let off. We beg for mercy to avoid pain and punishment and retribution. And it's not our fault that we still think like this. Hughes, of course, in the cathedral at that time, points to the judgment porch where there's a picture, a sculpture of Christ enthroned and all the people who have been exonerated at the end of life at judgment are going up to heaven led by angels, joyfully rejoicing. And all the condemned are pleading and begging for mercy. And they're herded by demons down to the gaping jaws of hell. It's all there. For Hughes, this vivid image of lost souls begging for mercy troubled him. And you can read about this in his book, The God of Surprises. As a child, he says he was faced with two contrary images of God. One as a loving father and the other as a harsh judge. He imagined God as being something like his awesome Uncle George. Uncle George loved him, but Uncle George was very judgmental. Little Gerard was rather afraid of him. And in his talk and in his book, you can read it, Hughes confesses the scenario in his mind. My parents insisted that we all visit my godlike Uncle George in his beautiful house every Sunday. We had to go because he ordered us to be there. And when we were there, we had to beg for mercy or he might punish us. 
and I was never quite sure what that meant. And so one day I asked him, and he showed me. My uncle took my arm and led me down dark stairs in his big house to a cellar. It became hotter and hotter, and I could hear screaming. And there was an oven-like door. He opened it. Look in there, my dear, he said. And I looked in, and I saw ugly demons and blazing red-hot flames with men, women, and children being dragged into them, screaming in terror. It was exactly like the image in Lincoln Cathedral's judgment porch. Now, said Uncle George, if you don't visit me every Sunday, and if you don't do what I tell you to do, and if you don't keep begging me for mercy every time you come, you'll end up here too. Well, says little Gerard, I, I couldn't wait to get out, to get away from him. On my way home, my parents warned me again that I must love my uncle with all my heart. And I could only blurt out, oh yes, I know, I do love him. But of course, I didn't. My uncle George, in my mind, was now a monster with his own torture chamber. And every Sunday, we still had to go and see him. And every Sunday, we begged over and over again for mercy. And in my little mind, I was begging never to end up being prodded by demons and thrown into my Uncle George's flaming furnace. Now, of course, later in life, Gerard Hughes ridicules his own former childish caricature of God. But he says it was hard to shake off. It lingered on, and it was made worse from time to time by occasional hellfire sermons from the pulpit that I was forced to sit through. It took time to replace my ridiculous image of God mercilessly torturing lost souls with the more mature image of a God of unconditional love. My prayer changed too. Lord have mercy somehow became, for me, Lord, you are mercy. You are love. Christ have mercy came to me in Christ, you are mercy. Mercy in person, mercy incarnate. Please make me merciful as you are merciful. Give me grace to be more like that father of the prodigal son and more like that good Samaritan. And it took time for me to think of mercy about not being about punishment, but about how God expresses his love. It took time to see Christ's commandment to love one another with acts of charity, which of course are no more than acts of mercy, as our expressions of human love for one another. For me, says Hughes, the commandment to love one another is exactly, exactly what mercy is all about. Not at all with begging to be excused or let off punishment. To ask God for mercy is to ask for his love, his divine love, in our lives and in our hearts. Love is all. Everyone needs love to experience it, to feel it, to receive it, to give it, to spread it, and to increase it among all our neighbours. A good God does not put down. A good God raises up. And that's our Christian vocation. We don't beg for divine mercy. No, we give thanks for it, that we already have it, proved on the Easter cross, 
simply because God is love. His love is unending, as we said in the psalm. His love is pure and totally unconditional. So if you'd like to stand and we'll say the Apostles' Creed, the Missile Letters printed the Apostles' Creed this week, so we'll say the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, and ascended into hell. On the third day he rose again, and ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From hence he come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. Brothers and sisters, as we continue to celebrate the joy of the resurrection, let us bring our needs and concerns to God, who is present among us now and whenever we gather in his name. Let us pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, that he continues to be guided by the Holy Spirit as he leads the church with wisdom and humility. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for our elected politicians and those who lead our communities, that the policies that they advocate are inclusive and always protect the weak, the disadvantaged and those most in need. Lord, in your mercy. And let us pray for peacemakers living and working in the troubled parts of the world, that their efforts may be fruitful and that they can bring true peace to our world. Lord, in your mercy. And let us pray for our parish family. Let us pray that together we can stand as true witnesses to the life, death and resurrection of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. And we pray for our sick brothers and sisters and also pray for those who use their skills to care for them and to heal them and comfort them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear and we pray for all who have died recently. We remember all those who mourn at this time, that they may be comforted. And we too remember all those whose anniversaries occur about this time. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our and in a moment of silence, we make our own private prayers and petitions. We join our prayers with those of Mary, mother of our risen Saviour, as we say together, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for, for us sinners, now, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. Father in heaven, you sent your only Son into this world to die on the cross for our sins, to rise in eternal glory. Hear the prayers of the faithful gathered here in your Son's name. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Hymn number 870. Thank you. and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and, those, and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may obtain unending happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all to lord you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. 
Therefore overcome with paschal joy. Every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the ending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis our Pope and Patrick our Bishop, and all those who holding to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things you may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you, and also for those to whom you've been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness for all their sins. Order our days in your peace. Command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension to heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gift that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel, to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember, Lord, also your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light and peace. To us also your sinners who... To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, and Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. To whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life. Bless them and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, to await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace, John. Peace with you. Peace with you.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be.
Hymn number 228. We pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
So people tell me they can hear me quite well from this microphone. So okay, I understand I'm being heard at the back, so I'll just say a few words from here. First of all, thank you very much, Deacon John, for your homily. As you probably know, about once a month, I ask one of the deacons to prepare a homily for all the masses. It's partly gives myself a rest from preparing a homily, but so realise it's actually good for me to hear a homily sometimes, not just the words that I want to say, but actually to listen to what someone else has to say, which might well be different to what I'd have prepared. But thank you, John, for reminding me especially about Gerard Hughes and that book, The God of Surprises. And if you've never read it, I do recommend it. It is well worth the read, not just to read through it quickly, but to actually think through the different points that it's read. It's certainly been an influence on me throughout my life, so I do recommend it to you as well. If you enjoyed listening to Deacon John, he's also going to have another chance to hear him on Tuesday evening when he gives the first of what may well become a series of lectures on the Christian history of Lincoln. So it's something organised in conjunction with the Catholic Society at the University of Lincoln, and so I think it's going to be quite a serious academic style talk, so bring your notepads ready to take notes, but I'm sure there'll be a chance to ask questions as well. And as I say, everyone's very welcome, six o'clock in the hall. And because of that, and because of two clergy funerals during the week, there are changes to the regular week, the regular schedule of Masses. So if you're coming to Mass in the week, please check carefully, particularly on Tuesday, Mass will actually be at five o'clock in the evening, which you might think is an unusual time, but it's actually when we normally, again, about once a month, have Mass on campus for the university students, but because of the talk, we're having that Mass here in church. Next Sunday, understand there's a 10K race happening at the top of town. In fact, I understand even one or two parishioners might be taking part in it and raising funds for various charities. But if you travel from the top of town, do please check that you can get here and back safely next Sunday or make necessary arrangements just to bring that to your attention. And do please note the piece that I've written about fire stewarding I will probably say more about that at a subsequent Mass, either next week or the week after, but do please read that carefully. It is something we need to be aware of and take seriously as a parish. So wish you all a happy and a peaceful week ahead. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Mighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hymn number hundred and thirteen.